Hello everyone, Alexander Milas here with the World Metal Congress, which is an organization set up to celebrate and to explore the global impact of heavy metal music. Now it's my absolute pleasure to kick off the proceedings this weekend ahead of In Absentia Day, which promises to be nothing short of a landmark event. Now for years as a music journalist and the editor-in-chief of Metal Hammer magazine, as well as a lifelong fan, I've always understood that heavy metal is more than music. It holds an intrinsic power to bring people together and also to challenge and to confront. And if you're like me and you believe that metal began with Black Sabbath, then you'll also agree that a lot of this is characterized by a turbulent relationship with the church that's been going for over 50 years. Now, I can't think of anyone in our world today who's a greater personification of that struggle than Nurgle, who for years has fearlessly confronted oppressive forces who would seek to limit his freedom of expression and to simply live how he chooses. And the boldness of his stance, to put it mildly, has righteously pissed off a lot of people. He makes some incredible music too. Now, there is no one better place to help give context to why this is such an important fight in 2020 than Lucian Greaves, who is the Harvard-educated founder of the Satanic Temple. Now, for years, he has courageously challenged a corrupt system which permits a politically powerful elite to be the sole arbiters of morality, while frequently adhering to none of those standards themselves. Now, you may know of some of his work if you've seen the recent, rather excellent documentary, Hail Satan. And if not, the Satanic Temple or a non-theistic organization set up to help expose many of these dangerous and destructive hypocrisies by intelligently challenging them on their own terms. Enjoy the conversation. I guess I kind of wanted to begin tonight's conversation because it's such a unique meeting of minds that's happening here. Um, with why we're here. Uh, I mean, Nurgle, can you tell us a, a little bit about In Absentia Day? What does that mean? And, and why did you call the live show that? In Absentia Day? Yes. Yeah, I mean, in the first place, it's a quote from uh, like one of the recent songs called the Ecclesia Diabolica Catholica. And um, it's a strong Latin statement that in English means uh, in the absence of God. And um, yeah, it's, what can I say? I think it's like these words of, an, I mean, we um, travestate that term and, and, and use different like metaphors to basically express the same kind of uh, meaning behind those words, you know, but it's, it's been one of the light motives of, um, of our content, of the Himat's content, of our, of our uh, message. So, for me, um, inviting our fans, legions, to the actual church, and that is very important. We're not, we're not gonna play in a venue that was converted from church into a venue. It was secularized and then it was converted. No. It is an, an actual church. I mean, it's abundant church. Uh, it's under the a, a curator's um, control, but it's in a private hand. So uh, eventually, we can pull it off. If it was um, still in use for some, you know, sacral -relig religious services, it would absolutely be not possible to do it, especially in Poland. But lately, I've heard the news that Cradlefield are playing in some St. Mary church or something like that. And then I investigated a little bit and then I found out, hey, it's not a church, it's a venue. We played in, in, in ex-church venues before, you know. This is the first time we're actually accommodating the, the band's production into actual church. So uh, doing that and calling the whole event in the absence of God uh, in absentia day, it just sounds, it couldn't sound more perfect and more fitting, you know what I mean? Considering the circumstances. So uh, obviously it's a, uh, it sounds that I was like religious already. It sounds very behemoth. It just feels right. And I love it. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I mean, uh, suffice it to say, it's going to probably piss off a lot of people, you know, um, in all sorts of ways. and. You know, uh, you, you have a long history of that. Honestly, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening, a lot of information floating around, and I'm like, I'm just seeing headlines 
I honestly don't really dig any deeper than that, you know, because I simply have no time and I don't really want to, you know, in, in, uh, uh, just, just pollute my brain with some like random information. Anyways, uh, the article was like, uh, the headline was, will Behemoth be arrested for playing in a church in Poland? And there was a question mark. So, well, um, yeah, I mean, then I'm like reposted that link and uh, kind of challenged my fellow uh, Kafa Talibans in Poland, give it a shot, give it a try. Let's see if you can do it, you know? I mean, uh, if you can shut down the event, if you can boycott it, if you can maybe attack it, you know, I don't know, man. That's why I call them Kafa Talibans, you know, because it feels like a lot of Catholics these days uh, very much despise to what they originally preach and, um, and talk about. They seem to be very jealous of how uh, Talibs, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, express their uh, beliefs. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a lot of Catholics go like, yeah. It's so easy for you to fuck with the Bible and Catholic Church, you know, because it's the, you know about just exposing the other chick. Well, maybe, maybe I'm just a, um, um, a coward, you know, but hey, I'm hawking you guys. It's not Talibs, because I have no history with Talibs. I was raised in Poland. I've seen maybe two mosques. Uh, and I don't really know any Talibs, you know, so I'm, and I'm Polish and Polish has always been extremely Catholic, Christian Catholic. So you are my target because you always been my enemy and uh, it just felt very organic. My, my, my every cell would scream, go against the current. And um, for 30 years of Behemoth's career, because that, that's how I like more or less that's why I guess my uh, awakening has started of course you know when I was 15 and I started Behemoth you know I can't really say that I was so aware and stuff you know but the the, the, um, the process of awareness is still ongoing obviously and I'm still a learner but um, I've always been anti-system and anti-catholic um, uh, anti-christian and it's, it, it is in my system and I can fucking help it you know so just combining all that, you know, it just it just feels right. I think I truly believe that Poland needs me. Poland needs Behemoth. I know it sounds arrogant, maybe belligerent and bully of me saying that, but I truly do believe that uh, uh, there's a reason why Behemoth is a Polish band, not an English band or Swedish or American. You know what I mean? Maybe if we were Swedish or UK we wouldn't be having this conversation here now. You know what I'm talking about? There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of factors that determined me to, to become what I have become and what I made with this band and how far we made it. Because of all the circumstances that, uh, uh, that we come from, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We were not spoiled, we were, we were raised that way. We were raised to be uh, rebellious and determined to to fuck the system. So, so Lucien, is, is is that a sentiment that you you resonate with? I mean, as a central figure in the Satanic Temple, you know, uh, there's a certain fearlessness in your story, you know, and defiance. And I, and I wonder if, you know, hearing that that's something that you can relate with. I mean, you've 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 not met before, um, but do you see a parallel, uh, you know, uh, between the uh, the work that Nordwell is doing and and a lot of your your own resistance of so many of these you know fundamentally pr oppressive ideas. Yeah, I think it was interesting to hear this discussion of where it comes from, though, from that kind of indoctrination that we suffer ourselves. A friend of mine, the American director John Waters, once said that he thanks God that he was raised Catholic because now sex will always be dirty. And I kind of think of that when people always ask. Why aren't we taking aim at the Islamists? You know, why, why, why do we seem to be focusing on the uh, the Christian culture? And for one thing, in the United States, it's uh, the Christian theocratic movement that's really trying to take over the government and impose their will upon everybody else. Uh, so people may make a measure of what they think globally is the worst 
problems with uh, superstitious based religion and theocracies, but but we're American based and the form that our blasphemy will take that means something to us personally is going to be directed at that which we were steeped in through our childhoods and in, in our own culture. So I don't think it's cowardly at all that we kind of contextualize our resistance in that way. It's just, it, it's, it's kind of the organic growth that, uh, that comes from being steeped in Judeo-Christian culture. So why is this important? Why is this fight so important now in 2020? You know, because um, it feels like this goes beyond theatrics. This goes beyond, you know, music. I mean, we're, we're talking about, um, you know, uh, the infiltration in politics and everything else of, you know, what can be um, perceived as extremely scary cult-like behavior. You know, this goes well beyond what heavy metal was originally, you know, perceived as, which is almost like, you know, it accidentally stumbled into this sort of uh, controversy with the church because Black Sabbath was called Black Sabbath. They love horror films and so on. Now it feels like a much more pronounced and sophisticated kind of dialogue that's happening. And, and, and Lucy, so much of your, you know, experience is about directly confronting, you know, those processes, you know, those elements of politics that when you get right down to it, they're not abstract. They're, they're happening now and they can be a little scary as well. Yeah, no, it's, it's horrific. And uh, one of the most disappointing parts of doing what we're doing is I think we're very clear that uh, we are looking to uphold religious freedom, real religious freedom for everybody. And if you don't allow Satanists to have their point of view uh, um, and able to openly express it uh, on an equal level to any other religion, uh, including Catholics or uh, or any other Christian sect, uh, you, you don't have that religious freedom. You don't have the kind of pluralism that the uh, United States is supposed to be based upon. And more and more, we see a really uh, intense political movement trying to uh, advance exclusive religious privilege to uh to Christians in the United States. And it's not a movement confined to the United States. You now see a Christian theocrat running Hungary. Uh, you see a Christian theocrat running Brazil. And they're all interconnected with uh, Trump's inner circle of, of theocrats who are really trying to establish this worldwide Christian uh, state of Christendom again. And, and that's the return to the dark ages. And so people look at what we're doing and they think a lot of times that these are hilarious pranks. That they put up a Ten Commandments monument. Now we're asking to put up a Satanic monument. But, but the, these, aren't, these aren't pranks and these aren't uh, actions of small significance. The way these things play out in our courts are going to have ramifications for generations to come. And it's going to speak directly to uh, how free we are as a culture overall in the way that countries treat bands like behemoth uh, those are not small issues either if uh, if they're getting arrested for playing shows um, and if the courts uphold that that's a terrible precedent and we can't allow that kind of thing to happen and people need to be very vocal they can be as offended as they want by the idea of satanism but they should very much uphold our freedom to practice and believe the way that we do within the limitations of the law. As, as we come up to the end of our time, I wondered if you had a message, um, uh, Nurgle, what do you hope people are gonna come away from the show with? This ambitious show set in an abandoned evangelical church? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm an, I'm an entertainer, uh, so I hope people will get entertained. But at the same time, I feel like I'm the awakener too, and I like the term. And uh, I always like in the back of my head, maybe it's naive or maybe it's not, you know, I get a lot of messages from people saying like that, you know, oh, what you do, you know, kind of 
you know, make me make up my mind and just think for myself, you know, it's, we're not necessarily asking people to follow what we do because I actually hate people doing that, you know. Uh, but I like people thinking for themselves and, and making their own decisions and uh, and not just being a blind ship that just follows the, you know, the mob and uh, yeah. I'd say, you know, that the more ships we can turn into black goats, the better for us, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I really hope, you know, it's, it's like, on one hand, it's entertainment, of course, you know, it's art, it's music, it's craft, uh, it's all that, you know, but uh, as I said before, you know, in the back of my head, like, how many people will just, how many of them will make it, how much this art and music, this 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 image, this 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 statement will trigger their minds, and they will just it will just go in another direction or the opposite or against. That'd be beautiful, you know. I know it works that way. You know, I just, I just don't know the scale of it, you know. And but then again, I remember what you said earlier that I I feel very fearless about what I do and I feel very vital about what I do because like deep in heart I know it's a it's a very important missionary social uh, work you know what I mean it's, it's a social work it's it's a beneficial it's it's positive it's um, it's motivating it's you know what I mean it's like I'm not telling kids to you know, just go and beat up your friend. No, 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 far from that. I'll, like the message that comes through is like, think for yourself, be smart, stay intelligent in the way, in the world that is going just, uh, the world is just going nuts and try to stay sane. This, keep the balance. Satan is here for the balance. If there was no Satan, it would just go like that, boom. So we need it for the balance. Balance it up, level it up, and 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 try to, you know, to to stay sane, stay smart, stay healthy, stay free in the world full of slavery. I know it's I'm I don't know I'm probably lacking a lot of vocabulary and a lot of a lot of that what I'm saying may sound very I don't know naive or something, but that that that, that is actually truly what I what I feel like and, you know, what I'm trying to, to maintain here. Christian, is, is that something that you respond to? I mean, a, a final word on behalf of the Satanic Temple? I, I just want to say that I, I agree that it's, uh, it's important work. It's important work uh, Behemoth is doing. And hail Satan. Hail <laughs> Satan. Indeed. All right, gents. Well, an absolute pleasure to sit down with you and share some ideas albeit virtually. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and I hope it's just the beginning of a long conversation. It's been great to have you on. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. It's fun. Thank you so much. What powerful and stimulating conversation. On behalf of everyone at the World Metal Congress, we hope that you've enjoyed what we do. Find us at worldmetalcongress.org and enjoy in absentia day this weekend.